Welcome everybody. My name is Debbie Byrne and I'm Managing Director of On Post Retail. I'm delighted to welcome you all today to our International Women's Day event and also for the launch of our new staff. I'm especially excited to welcome all of you secondary school students across the country. The theme of this year's International Women's Day is Choose to Challenge, encouraging all of us to call out gender bias and inequality when we see it and also to celebrate the great achievements of women such as Jane Lady Wilde, who challenged the establishment in the 1800s and really championed women's rights at a time when women had very few rights and who we're honoring today on our stamp, a beautifully designed stamp by Design HQ. So we'll hear from award-winning author Martina Devlin later in our program, where she'll take us through the life, career, and challenges of this remarkable woman. In a few minutes, I'm also very excited um, to talk to Dr. Nora Patton, who's taking on the challenge of going into space and is on course to be Ireland's first astronaut. And then at the end of the programme, we'll hear from Loa, who is an Irish Sierra Leonean singer-songwriter and should perform her inspirational new song, Your World First. So there's no doubt that the last 12 months really have been a challenging time and a year like no other. Little did we realise when we gathered in the GPO last year to celebrate the lives of five pioneering Irish women who featured on our stamps, that it would be the last real live event that many of us um, would attend. We've seen during this year that the pioneering and challenging spirit in many parts of society is alive and well, as many amazing men and women have responded to the COVID pandemic. Our doctors, nurses, and other healthcare and frontline workers have faced the challenge of COVID head on, and we owe them an immense gratitude. And I'm really proud of my own colleagues in Ampost, who have kept our own essential services open, allowing people to collect their pension, their social welfare, access banking at the post office, and for our postmen and women who've been on the road tirelessly throughout, ensuring that people are connected and delivering your online shopping. Our industry in which we operate in is undergoing immense change. And over the last number of years, we as a management team and as a company collectively have really had to adapt and to challenge our traditional ways of working and innovate to keep relevant, profitable and keep ahead of the competition. We've also had to look at our teams and culture to ensure that we're creating an inclusive workplace with a diversity of skills, and that includes gender, age, ethnicity, et cetera. And that diversity is absolutely crucial to ensure that we are relevant to our consumers and that we continue to adapt and change as we transform as a company. So I'm delighted to say that in the three years that I've been at On Post, we've really been on a great journey. Our management board is now a 50-50 male female split, which is fantastic. And when I look across the general management population within On Post, we've seen great, amazing uh, women rise through the ranks. And we've also recruited some fantastic new talent externally. And it's really exciting to be around a table moving forward big strategic initiatives, hearing those diverse voices and challenges, which is fantastic for all of us, bringing fresh perspective and views. We've some way to go um, yet to achieve a 50-50 balance in terms of that gender split within our senior management um, population, but we're on the journey. We've done an amazing job, I think, in terms of our gender pay gap, that was at 3.7% in 2019, and we've managed to reduce that to 1.41% in 2020, which is great. And we've also reintroduced our graduate program, and I think this September will be fourth intake of fresh new talent in the organisation, which brings a fresh perspective, challenging all of us in terms of how we look at things, and that's great. The Unpost Green Institute places an emphasis on learning and development of the company for everybody. And as part of our commitment to nurturing and advancing female talent, we have a new mentoring program. So we pay it forward and we support and nurture that talent within the business. And we've also just launched Aspire, 
which is our new female development program. So enough about Unpust. I'd like to introduce you to our first guest and one woman who definitely aspires to reach career heights is Dr. Nora Patton. Born in Ballina, County Mayo, she's been fascinated by space from a very young age and has been determined in her pursuit of her dream to get there. She has taken part in programs run by European Space Agency and also the International Space University and hopes to become Ireland's first astronaut, which I think is mega exciting. She's a passionate STEM advocate and created the Only Way is Up project to launch Ireland's first student experiment to the International Space Station. And I know she's going to tell us a little bit more about that. And if that's not enough, she also found time to write an award-winning children's book called Shooting for the Stars. We're really looking forward to hearing a little bit more about how you got into this whole area, about your career and your challenges along your journey. Thank you very much, Debbie. I am delighted to join you today on what marks yet another milestone in the celebration of women's creativity and achievements. This year's International Women's Day theme is Choose to Challenge. And I think it's a very fitting uh, topic that calls on each of us, men and women, to look at how we as individuals and as organizations can choose to challenge. When I think about this theme, it's not just about visibility. It's about each of us challenging the status quo and using our platforms and place in this world to open up opportunities for others. I think about all of the women who went before me who quite simply didn't have the choices and the opportunities that I have today. And I think about all of the men and women in history who have fought for equal opportunities. I'd like to take a couple of moments to introduce myself and share a little bit about why I think it is so important to choose to challenge. When I was 11 years of age, I had an amazing opportunity to visit NASA in Cleveland, Ohio. And that experience literally changed the course of my life. I got an insight into a whole new world and became obsessed with space. Everything from astronauts to rockets, anything space related, I was in. And I look back on that period and Growing up in Mayo in the 1990s, I reflect on really the lack of visible role models during that time. And also the lack of a roadmap for a career that was a little bit different. But I was lucky for a number of reasons. I got to go back to NASA on a number of occasions through, throughout my teenage years. And when I was 15, I got to visit the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. That was the day I said space was it. And even though I had absolutely no idea how I was going to make this dream become a reality, I knew I had to try. I also had a wonderful art teacher for my junior search project, Mr. McDonough. At times where I really needed a little bit of encouragement and support, he would sit and help me draw different types of rockets and he would speak with me about what I was going to study when I finished school. That has made me realise the importance of supporting people's big ambitions and big dreams in life because who knows what might be possible. Fast forward 20 years and I have had some amazing out of this world opportunities. And I've been able to use these opportunities to open up the door for others to follow. In 2006, I met former NASA astronaut Eileen Collins. Colonel Collins became the first female to pilot and command the space shuttle. And when she launched to space in 1995, she invited the Mercury 13 to watch her launch. The Mercury 13 were a group of female pilots who, back in the 1960s, went through some of the same testing and training 
that the all-male Mercury 7 original NASA astronauts went through. But at that time, NASA didn't allow women astronauts. Colonel Collins recognized the commitment of these women in paving the way for others to follow. And what's lovely about this is to tie in today that Colonel Collins' father's side is from County Cork, and she features on one of the OMPUST space exploration stamps that were launched in 2019 to celebrate the first landing on the moon and US astronauts with Irish heritage. So I think about people like Eileen Collins and the Mercury 13, and I think about the role that each of us can play in choosing to challenge. For me, my space ambition has been a journey of almost 25 years now, but I've had some incredible experiences along the way. In 2010, I studied at the International Space University, and that was an amazing experience in terms of getting involved in an international crew of space professionals and getting to learn lots about space. We learned about the many different topics of space, everything from space humanities to law to engineering and business. It was a realization of just how vast the space sector is, and also a realization of just how many opportunities there are there. During that time, I also became much more aware of the opportunities that have come along with commercial space. I met the founder of a company called NanoRacks, who have research facilities on the International Space Station. I learned about student projects from countries all around the world, including the United States, that were tested on the International Space Station. And I thought, what an amazing opportunity for young people to get involved in real hands-on space science. I also thought, what about Ireland? So at that time, I was working at the Irish Composite Centre and through a partnership with NanoRax, I organised the first student experiment from Ireland to go to the International Space Station. It launched in 2014 and spent about 10 weeks on board before coming back to Earth and coming back to Ireland. When we talk about commercial space, it is opening up opportunities like never before for many people around the globe. Since 2017, I have been a citizen scientist astronaut candidate at Project Possum. This project has allowed me to gain hands-on space training experience. We work with a commercial spacesuit manufacturer. I've had an opportunity to fly on microgravity flights as a researcher, and I've had an opportunity to experience high G forces. And again, this opportunity has allowed me to be part of a much bigger international team. But equally, we want to use this opportunity to open the doors for others. So we created the Possum 13, named in honour of the Mercury 13, to engage young girls in space science. Through this initiative, teenagers, including Irish teenagers, have had an opportunity to design an experiment and have it flown on a microgravity research flight. Again, an opportunity I would have absolutely loved to have had as a teenager, but another great example of how we can all choose to challenge and use our opportunities to open the doors for others to follow. As Debbie mentioned in my introduction, I published a book called Shooting for the Stars in 2019. What has been one of the most amazing outputs and part of sharing my journey is the reaction and the impact of young people in Ireland. I get letters now from kids and I'd like to read a very short extract from one of these letters. Hi Nora, my name is Aoife. I am nine years old and I live in Dublin. I love space and I want to go to the moon someday and I want to be an aeronautical engineer like you. And I read this and I thought how fantastic this little nine-year-old girl is seeing something so much bigger than she might have had the opportunity to see 10 years ago. Finally, I would like to close by sharing a fabulous initiative which explored the lives of six remarkable Irish women whose work 
changed the lives of others, and in many cases, changed the course of history. Alongside the Trailblazers documentary, there was a light festival for St. Bridget's Day, with a series of illuminations projected onto public buildings, including the GPO. There was also an animation series, which invited young people aged seven to 17 to nominate their heroines. I was nominated by a young girl called Clara, and I'd like to show you all that animation. My hero is Dr. Nora Patton. When she was 11, like me, Dr. Nora first dreamed of going to space. That's when she visited NASA for the first time. And she decided right then and there that she wanted to be an astronaut. Nora knew that getting up here would not be easy, but she was determined. She became a doctor of aerodynamics and even went to the International Space University, which is an actual thing. Now, she's a scientist astronaut candidate and she's done all sorts of amazing things, like microgravity flying, high G flight training, and spacesuit testing. All getting her ready for the most amazing thing of all, when Nora is the first Irish person in space. I know that Nora is going to make her dream come true. And then I'll make my dream to follow Nora to the stars come true too. As Nora says, dream your own dream and shoot for the stars. Great, Nora. That was a fantastic kind of insight into your career and your influences and, and all your challenges. And you really are paving the way in quite a male-dominated um, world. So I suppose my question to you is, what advice would you have for young women out there looking to pave their way in a more male-dominated industry, not just space, but looking outside to, to broader disciplines? What advice would you have for them? Yeah, so I'd say to them, try not to let that be a factor that puts you off following your interests. And um, certainly what I found over the years is that you'll make friends and you'll have male and female colleagues um, in the industry, whatever it is that you choose. Um, and so I think there are loads of opportunities now, even when you look at the supports for young female undergraduates and graduates there's specific programs that are there to facilitate their support and um, so I'd say you know look at what's available um, and don't be afraid don't let that, don't let it put you off if you think it's more male dominated. Brilliant well that actually leads me now very nicely um, into my next question I was reading recently about the whole concept of paying it forward and it's such, I don't know, they're, they're such nice words and it really stuck a chord with me and really reinforced, you know, with me, the onus that um, I and, you know, senior females in all walks of life, the um, obligation and the onus on us, I suppose, to identify and um, nurture um, talent. And I just wanted to, I suppose, ask you, who were your influences and supports and mentors as you went on uh, your journey? Yeah, so I think back on the last, say, 30 years, even 25 years. And certainly what I have realized is that as we go through different phases in our career and phases in our life, those supports that we need 
differ. Um, so I've had some amazing mentors, male and female, over the years. Um, and even I think back to when I was in secondary school and that lovely art teacher that I had, Mr. McDonough, and those times where you really need encouragement, I think it's important to find a mentor who can support you during that time. Um, it certainly makes it easier to come through those hard patches that you're going to encounter and you are going to encounter those as you go through life. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I, I think, again, you know, that notion of just those words of encouragement that sometimes just all people need, you know, um, is that little kind of push um, and that kind of vote of confidence. So you're right. So I think that's a, you know, I think it's a really good reminder for all of us here at the event uh, today just to kind of reflect on that. So look, um, as if your career hasn't been um, busy enough, you're also author of an award-winning children's book, Shooting for the Stars. And I know um, you're the recipient of an unpost um, Irish Book Awards in 2019 for that. So tell me um, just a little bit about your book, but also I just want to talk to you um, about your involvement with the Bold Girls campaign. I love that. Um, by Children's Book Ireland. And when I was reading up about that, um, it really is a fantastic initiative, I think, to break down the societal stereotypes and celebrate the portrayal of strong, confident, intelligent, brave young um, girls and women in books. And I think it's an amazing kind of um, initiative. So just tell me a little bit about one, your own book, and then two, your involvement. So yeah, I think there's such a fabulous tie-in between my book and the Bold Girls campaign. So back in 2018, Children's Books Ireland, as you say, launched this fabulous initiative. And it was really to highlight the role of women uh, and girls in books, um, whether that be characters, illustrators, authors. Um, so a really fabulous way of um, highlighting the, the role of women. Um, and I participated in their launch event in Trinity that year. And while I was at the event, there were there were some people there from O'Brien Press. And then after the, the event, they asked me about the possibility of doing a book uh, about my journey to space and all of the engagement I do with young kids. So I think a lovely tie in there between that fabulous initiative and then my own book, as you say, uh, Shooting for the Stars, which has reached many households across the country and, and outside of Ireland. Um, but certainly the, the impact of the book and the impact of my journey has been an amazing um, thing that I didn't plan for, um, but it's been made the journey and everything that I've been working for all the more worthwhile. Fantastic. Yeah, no, look, and I think anything that breaks down and challenges all of those societal norms and you know we all know with kind of young kids that kind of starts with tv programs and movies and books so look I, I think that that's kind of fantastic and I think another thing that we kind of touched on earlier that there are so many great women who've achieved so much in their fields but often their stories um are not very well documented you know and, and we and I, I'll take Jane Lady Wilde, who features on our stamps, and we'll hear more from Martina about that um, next. But also, RT last year did a great program um, called The Her Story, and that documented six fantastic, epic pioneering women who really were leaders and pioneers in a vast um, array of fields from business to poli uh, politics, science, arts, and the innovation, um, aviation rather. So tell me a little bit about how you got involved with them. Like you really do pop up all the time as we kind of champion um, uh, great uh, stories like this, which is fantastic. Yes, I think uh, the Her Story campaign, which launched in 2019, is just another fabulous initiative. Again, really to, to highlight and to showcase trailblazers in Irish history who have in some ways been forgotten about uh, in yeah. our history books. Um, and so one, one example of the, the ladies that they showcased is uh, Lady Mary Peak, and she's a Limerick born lady, uh, but a pioneering aviator. Um, so she was the first person, man or woman, to fly solo across Africa. Um, and she also became the first female commercial pilot in the UK. So if you think about it for her time, 
that was a huge feat and a huge barrier to have broken down. So that's just one example. There was six remarkable ladies that they showcased. Um, and again, I just think it goes to highlight the importance of getting these stories out there so that it's not just visible to young girls, but also equally to young boys um, and and also us adults uh, as well, men and women. I think it's just such a lovely initiative. Super. Um, I suppose just to kind of wrap up and conclude, I just wanted to kind of um, reflect on something that was running through my mind last night in terms of the Adams Pug Initiative. And it really struck a chord with me when I started to reflect on really the power of one and what that little boy has done and how he's captured people's imagination. And I think we've all the ability to make a positive difference and a change, no matter how small that is. And I know um, Laura and I were chatting kind of earlier and we'd like to kind of collectively pose that challenge to everybody at our event today and indeed to all of you who will tune in um, subsequently. And we'd like to put that challenge to you to create that personal reflection and, and think about what are you going to do this year to challenge the status quo and make that small bit of difference, um, be that in mentoring or whatever that might be. Um, so we'd like you just to take a moment on that and make that personal commitment. So look, Nora, fabulous to talk to you. I've really enjoyed it and really thank you for your time. I'm sure everybody else has had... Um, a great experience as well. Thanks a million and likewise, and just to say a very happy International Women's Day to everyone. Thanks so much. Moving on now, we're going over to our newly refurbished post office in St. Andrew Street in Dublin to hear from Martina Devlin, award-winning author, who's going to tell us more about the inspiring Jane Lady Wilde. Speranza was a feminist long before the term was even thought of. She was quite magnificent. She was unconventional and a thinker, a writer, a reformer. As a writer, she wrote in all sorts of genres from poetry to travel writing to journalism to essays. She's known as the mother of Oscar Wilde, but Speranza was a celebrity long before Oscar was even born. She was born in 1821 in Wexford, spent the greater part of her life in Dublin and her final years in London. She wrote all sorts of books. This is one of them. It's Ancient Legends of Ireland. Yeats read it voraciously uh, and was very much affected by it. Some of the stories in it are the evil eye, the priest's soul, the stolen bride. So that gives you an idea of the sorts of stories she collected and wrote about. But she also did travel journalism, essays, poetry, newspaper articles, and she was a really gifted linguist and translated stories from Europe, including a really influential one called Sidonia the Sorcerer, about uh, a real life witchcraft trial. Unusually for her time, she prioritized the mind above the face, and she said that women should be trained to think. Uh, she said that at the moment they led idle, vain lives. And it was impossible to believe that a woman would be less loving or uh, less admired because she was uneducated. Some of the causes she championed were the rational dress movement. Um, women today can wear trousers, have pockets in their clothes because of Speranza, um, who said that it was ridiculous to put girls into corsets and clothes that they weren't comfortable in, they couldn't even breathe in. Um, she said, you know, they had to be able to walk freely if they were to think. 
Uh, another cause she espoused was the vote for women, but her big project, I think, was education for women. And she wrote articles about it and essays, and editors loved her because she had a very dramatic turn of phrase. She said, must women forever clank about in fetters? It sounds quite theatrical today, but it's impossible to underestimate how little agency women of her period had. And she resented it bitterly. She was a free thinker. She was very dramatic looking herself. She was nearly six feet tall. She had blue black hair and flashing brown eyes and a very bohemian style of dress. Uh, so obviously she understood the importance of presentation to get a message across, but the message was what mattered to her. I've always loved her for her passion and her courage. And I wrote a short story about her in a collection of stories about women who shaped Ireland. It's called Truth and Dare. And in this Speranza story, uh, she's living in London. It's near the end of her life. And she's just written to the governor of Reading Jail asking for Oscar to be allowed out to visit her. When she's alone, Jane decides it's time to read her letter. Sliding her spectacles onto her nose, she opens the envelope and scans the typed sheet. It's signed at the foot of the page by the governor, Henry B. Isaacson. I regret not possible interference with prison routine. The blood slows in Jane's veins. Outside, a seagull squawks. A cart rattles past. From the Thames, the muffled horn of a barge drones. She turns her face to the wall. Mr. Isaacson must have a heart of stone to reject a dying mother's request. They warned her he was a mulberry-faced dictator. Yet she convinced herself he would yield to the intensity of her desire. There's nothing left for her now. Even Speranza cannot cling on to hope. A rustle as the note drops from her hand. Let it lie on the floor, the ungenerous letter. She won't trouble to read it again. The rejection is an insult to motherhood. Does Mr. Isaacson have a mother? He doesn't deserve one. The hypocrisy of the present age is intolerable. Respectability is for tradespeople. The wilds need have no truck with it. If Oscar has done what they say he has, how was anyone injured by it? Beauty alone, beauty always, beauty forever. Wow, fantastic. Thanks, Martina. Speranza was really, truly a woman ahead of her um, times. So to close out today's programme, we're delighted to share an exclusive performance by Loa of our latest song, Your World. So thank you, everyone, for joining us today. We really hope you enjoyed the programme. The event will be available to watch on onpuss.com forward slash choose to challenge for another two weeks. So sit back and relax and over your world is as big as you make it I know for I used to abide in the narrowest nest in the corner my wings pressing close to my side But I sighted the distant horizon Where the skyline encircled the sea And I throbbed with a burning desire To travel this image
So to the other 